All you have to do is not turn cur every time you see them. Is not give up your dignity and your integrity. You must honor your oath. And you took an oath to stand if it meant losing your life with our King Jesus Christ. That's your oath, Ock, and you must do it. This is not something your wife has to do. This is not something your child has to do. This is something that you have to do. This is a thing of honor among men. It's people, it's a people special unto himself. A people who God loves close to him, keeps close to him. Continue. Above all people are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you. He Stop. Said, the Most High did not set his love upon you or choose you. Because once again, this can be something that you might want to understand. There are some of you brothers, one of my first orders for tonight. First of all, this I would pray with a fervent, sincere prayer that the IUIC would come and circle one of our schools. I would pray that something like that would happen. And the Lord God that sits in heaven, if he is merciful, he'll let it happen. Here's what you're supposed to do. If you're alone in that school, you go outside. Right. In the UPK, Gino Jennings stays inside. You're not allowed to stay inside. If you are alone in the school, if you are in the fucking supermarket and some purple pig comes up to you and wants to battle you, you give him something that give him what he asked for. Right. Do you understand? Give him exactly what he wants. If you're out with your wife at a goddamn uh, gender reveal with the blue dye all over you and some purple faggot wants to battle you, give him exactly what he came there for. Don't ever deny a battle, ever. Whoever wants the battle can have one. They can have one anytime they want it. And the IUIC are a bunch of filthy sinners, homosexuals, thieves, and liars. I have their mug shots up here, and I can play tonight, or General Johanna will put them up on the screen. I have all of it if you need it. They steal from their own members. They send dick pics to each other. I have, I have that right here. I have it right here. I could play it tonight, but I might not have time. You can go find it out on your own. And they go and attempt to kill transsexuals that they're dating. And they murdered a poor little sister who had sex with one of their African dogs in Africa. She got murdered. They thought they could force Geno Jennings to give up his religion. Listen, maybe Geno Jennings doesn't come outside. We come outside. We have to come outside. Does everyone understand me? Oh, no. If I ever hear about one of you saying, well, I thought it was, what's the word cowards use? I had to use uh, wisdom. That's a, that's a coward. What'd you do? Uh, well, see, it was like 40 of them. And I was there in the supermarket. So, you know, I had to use, the Bible says, be harmless as a dove and gentle as a gentle gentle. Brother, you better go outside. Uh, you're going to be gentle out of these doors. We can't let a coward sit in here with us. This isn't like high school. This is like prison. Am I making it? Un you understand? You brothers seem like good, nice brother. You might have never been to jail. But it's more like that. It's not like high school where the bullies run the school, you know, because they're bigger. And there's so many of them. It's like prison where if you don't fight, you die. So you don't have a choice to fight. You have to defend yourself. You can never let anyone punk you ever. Why? Because you stand for the king of Israel. You represent him. And if you are a coward, then Christ is a coward. If you are divided, then Christ is divided. <clears throat> All right. Shalom. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. This lesson is going to be entitled Response. Wisdom is for cowards. Now, you saw that, um, a collection of short clips from this individual you see on the screen from the ISUPK. He was speaking on regarding this, the situation that happened with ISUPK and IUIC, getting into that brawl, that melee, uh, whenever it happened. The title of the video that all those clips came from is right here. Four men of God attacked by 25 off-duty purple pigs. All right. And what we're responding to in this is. What he said about, you know, if you use wisdom, you're a coward, basically. 
I mean, he, that's pretty much what he said. Now, one thing that I noticed throughout this video, and I got it frozen right here for a reason. And the individual, this is one of the uh, leaders at ISUPK. I think his name is General Mahayaman. If I'm saying that wrong, you know, whatever. The dude is a character. This is the same guy that said John the Baptist wasn't in the truth. He made that whole speech. John the Baptist is a, a, a plate of fried fish. Pass me the hot sauce. I think he said John the Baptist is a red-tailed squirrel run up into a tree. You know, and he also be, sometimes you'll see him teach with them big-ass knives. He have a big knife. <laughs> I want the knife, please. He's that guy. And he said other stuff, too, you know, that uh, – I forget exactly. You know, he's obsessed with penises. I know that much. He says that a lot. You know, a lot of sexual stuff. Anyway, you notice that I U S I S U P K got their own glasses, got the emblem on the bottom. You see that it, <laughs> just an odd individual and, and and says odd things. But but is that true? Is wisdom? You know, is is, is are you a coward if you use wisdom? Well, the answer is no. We, and I just wanted to show you that. And you can see him right here got him frozen because I know this liquor because he drinks it here and then he chases it immediately with water. Drinkers know what that is. You got a chaser. So he's drinking the alcohol. Then he got the water chaser. It could be soda. You know, it could be Sprite or something. Anyway, just wanted to show that. So let's get into the lesson. And first, before we get into the lesson, whenever you teach brothers out there, be wise and understand when you go into the congregation, you are not supposed to be drinking. Like you, we've heard stories, you know. Uh, in the past, I remember when I first came into the truth, there was this one guy, his name was Shaka War from the old school. You know, he was kind of lukewarm. You would just go out sometimes and teach. I mean, he was a powerful brother. But, you know, this dude, he would get drunk. Well, I wouldn't say get drunk. I would say he would drink liquor before he went to camp. So make sure you don't be doing that because this guy was, you know, going off and doing that. He's in the congregation. It would be different if you, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to speak on what I know, what I see. This is Leviticus 10, verse 8, it says, And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Drink not wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. You are not supposed to be in, the, and you can that can be described as in the tabernacle. There, he's in the school with people present, women, men. You can hear him clapping every time you make a point. They clap. And they do all of that. So, you know, he was going off. I drink. I read it again. Do not drink wine nor strong drink. And that was surely strong drink in that glass. Thou nor thy sons with thee. When ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation. Now, some say we are under grace. Well, and that is true. We are under grace. You may argue he's not a Levite. Okay, yeah, fine. But it's still going off. All right, he's not supposed to do it. Anyway, moving on. So he made a, a point. He said that if um, if you're a coward, then that means Yahweh Shai is a coward or something like that. Well, you have to go back in the scriptures and read what did the Savior do? He didn't fight when he got uh, back into a corner. This is John 18, 36. As a matter of fact, Pilate was asking him something and then Yahweh Shai answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then will my servants fight. See that? that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from thence, from hence, excuse me. So, you know, when they came to try to get Yahweh Shai, he told, he even told Peter, put up again thy sword. Let's see here. Put up again. Bear with me here. When they came to get him, he went, he went peaceably, peacefully and peaceably. He didn't tell his disciples to fight. This is uh Matthew 26 and 52. I'll just jump right in here. And, uh, well, we'll start at verse 50. It says, And Yahweh Shai said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahweh Shai and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahweh Shai stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. This was Peter that did this. Then said Yahweh Shai unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. He told them, don't, don't uh, try to fight. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels? You see? Now, stupid Israelite would try to use that, that example where, you know, he told them to go sell their garment and buy a sword. But did they ever fight with the swords? 
Did they ever go out and do anything? And I and I, I got a video going into that. It's on my channel. I guess I have to uh put it in the description because you know during Yahweh Shah's ministry, he didn't pack, he he didn't carry no weapon, should I say, in their time. You know, that was after his ministry was over. You see? But they never used those swords because you see here the example with Peter. He told him to put up again his sword. And then he went on to say, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father? And he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. He said, look, I got the power to call angels down here and put in work if I wanted to do that. But that's not what he wanted to do. So don't get, you know, pushed up into stupidity by, uh, you know, certain individuals, by, by these leaders. You're not supposed to be doing anything but preaching the gospel. Now, if something happens, are you going to defend yourself? I would imagine you would. Right. If you just don't have any other choice, then you, you defend yourself. And I can speak from example. You saw the thug all up in my grill, all up in our face. Did we get into a fight? No. You saw the other camp challenge us and say all the stuff they said. Did you see us get into a fight? No. We went down the street. We used wisdom, which is what the Lord said. And when you go back into the scriptures, although King David is known as a great mighty man and, a, and, a, and, a, and you know, the top one of the top warriors that's ever existed. David has killed his uh, Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. There was times when David had to flee. This is one of them. First Samuel twenty twenty four. It says so. David hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat down to eat meat. And don't forget when Saul tried to pin David to the wall with his javelin. Right, he ran, he fled, he hid in the cave. He did all of that, and then you had the Savior Yahweh Shai hiding himself. This is John eight fifty nine. You know, as a matter of fact, let's open this up. John 8, and I'll start at verse 56. He says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Yahweh shall have said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Yahweh Shai hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. What did he do? He hid himself, right? He made himself either invisible or he or he uh, teleported. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Yahweh Shai hid himself. He didn't sit there and try to fight them all, and he had power. And went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. You see? So don't listen to the foolishness about if you use wisdom that you're a coward. Okay? And, here, and right here in Ecclesiastes, there's, there's a time for certain things. Or should I say there's a time for everything as we read it here. A time for everything. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. And then it goes into all the different things, you know, time for this, a time for that. Verse 5 says, a time to cast away stones. And a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. Yeah, you're going, you know, you're going to hug at times, but other times you're not going to hug. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate. Listen, a time of war and the time of peace. So you have to know what time you're in. We're in the time of prophecy, which is spiritual war, but you will know when the time of literal war is, and it's not now. Now, again, I say that you could come into a situation where you may have to defend yourself. We're not speaking of that. Let me just check some of my real quick, brothers. Make sure this thing recording, and it is. So I want to go and read you more scriptures. So let's get into this a little bit more with wisdom, because it's all throughout the scriptures what the Lord told us to do. When we read, uh, Isaiah 33 and 5 is what I wanted. Listen to this. It says, The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. If you got judgment, you know what time you're in and what's best for the time. You got to protect this truth. It says, And wisdom, there's wisdom, and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. So wait a minute. General Mahayaman said that if you use wisdom, you're a coward. But this says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And if you fear the Lord, you're not going to do anything to get the ministry blamed. You're not going to go around the earth like a, like a, uh, thinking you're a mighty man. Okay. 
Let's see real quick here. Uh, die. Oh, man. Let's see something real quick. I didn't bring this scripture up. I'm kind of holding the microphone with one hand. So I'm not able to type as fast as I would like to. Yeah, look at this. This is Proverbs 7. I'll start at verse 1. You know what? I'll just go right to the point. It says, Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kin's woman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, which is what? False doctrine. Other philosophies, which are likened unto women. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. You're supposed to say unto wisdom, she's your sister. But I guess in this dude's case, he thinks that if wisdom is your sister, then you will call her a bitch, which is completely dumb. You know, now we ain't part of the whole uh, mess that's going on. But you can just see that the Most High is using those two groups. And they both look bad. They're exposing certain dirt on each other, which is, you know, uh, you know, I, I, things like that are embarrassing. I mean, I, ha I hate to put that in the clip. But, you know, I want you to get the totality of what the dude was saying. Now, he wasn't completely saying you because, you know, it was kind of confusing. He was saying on the one hand, you're supposed to defend yourself. But then he ended off and you didn't really see it. But you're supposed to defend the gospel. Well, which is it? You know, it really sounded like he was telling people to fight. You better come outside and all of this. And he used a spiritual battle, but he made it sound like it was a physical battle. You really got to watch these different leaders, these different jakes, because they're wicked. Let's continue on with the lesson. I don't want to make it too long. This is Matthew 10, verse 16. Listen to what Yahweh Shah says. And General Mahayaman, he he quoted this in error, might I add. Now, again, these two groups, they're going back and forth with each other. And a lot of the stuff is uh, you know, carnal. Um, from the I'll say from the ISUPK standpoint, it's carnal as shit. IUIC is approaching it with a little more spirituality. But you know, at the end of the day, they both they both going off. You know for that incident that happened and then for certain teachings that they teach so we just hear in a doctrinal sense matthew 10 16 it says and this is yahweh shah what he told his men he said behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves you see that he told them to be harmless as doves and then he goes on to explain but beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the gentiles see that but when did he tell did he say when they try to deliver you up pull out the blicky no did he say when they surround you going to your uh your your jujitsu no he didn't say that put on your gloves do your mma moves no he didn't say that but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what ye shall speak for it is for it shall be given you in the same hour what you shall speak. You're supposed to just be speaking, for it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which is in you. So he told them, he gave us instructions on what we're to do. And you can even look back in the history, right? As uh, Romans 15 and 4 says, the things that are written before time were written for our learning, or things that are written afore time. And our history of the Israelites are written for our learning. So this is so let's look at here with Gideon and his 300 chosen men, what the Lord did. Now, this is right here. It says Judges 7 and 1. Then Jerubbaal, who is Gideon and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harad. So that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. These are the Midianites, which were Arabs, Ishmaelites. And the Lord, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah said unto Gideon. The people that are with thee are too many for me to give into the Midianites, so like for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. So the most I said, Look, if you if I let you defeat the Midianites with this many men, they're gonna think it because you had numbers. Verse three, he says, Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid. Let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead and there returned of the people 20 and 2000 and there remained 10,000. So the Lord had, you know, had a plan. He wanted to thin out the herd and he said, anybody that's afraid. So you will have, you know, when you're going to go to war, you will be fearful because you don't know what the Lord is going to decide. But look at this. You're going to have another group that didn't use wisdom and they got sent home. 
Verse four says, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee. The same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee. The same shall not go. So he brought down the people into the water and the Lord said unto Gideon, every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself by himself. Likewise, every one that bowed down upon his knees to drink and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go every man into his place. You see that? So the Lord said, look. Those ones that were not using wisdom, they got all the way down on their knees and got into the basically put their face in the water. They can't watch the enemy coming. Those that got, you know, got down and they was using their hand to bring the water up while they kept their eyes paying attention to what's going on. They were using wisdom. You see. So you see General Mahayaman is wrong again. And all throughout history, the prophets and the great men of the Lord won great battles and did a lot of mighty feats through wisdom and faith. If you got faith, you're going to use wisdom. You ain't going to try to rely on your brute strength. That's how you get destroyed. If you go to Hebrews 11, there's a long list of men who did things and used wisdom. And if you go to, uh, let's see here. It, it, it used the words faith, but you know, through their, through their faith or through their wisdom, they had faith and through their faith, they had wisdom. You see? All kinds of stuff. And you've seen very few of them. I mean, there was times when when uh they did have to endure stonings and certain stuff. There was also here, if I go and bring up this other window, go to the King James, to the 1611. There's a this whole chapters dealing with wisdom. I and I mean I meant to mention that there are other brothers that have done lessons on this. This is my lesson. It's kind of late, actually. But there's whole chapters. That whole Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 was all about wisdom. See? Wisdom of Solomon 730. For, for after this cometh night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 1. Wisdom reaches from one end to another mightily, and sweetly does she order all things. See? And there was another scripture that told you what? that uh call wisdom thy thy sister you see and there's all kind of you know scriptures there's even a a, a a whole book in the apocrypha called the wisdom of solomon what is wrong with this guy if you use wisdom and you know like i said probably what happens is the dude get excited which i didn't say this but that, that dude get excited what i did say is that he was drinking alcohol drinking strong drink while he was teaching that's a that's a terrible combination because you're going to say things. You're going to embellish, which is add on to, you're going to lie. You're going to embellish. And uh, there's another word too. Um, I can't remember right now, but you're going to, you're going to embellish. You're going to add on things that are, that are not even in the scriptures. You telling people that wisdom, you know, you, you avoid a fight or you avoid 40 people and it's just you with your wife. That's a terrible thing to do. What if you get, what if you get in a battle and you got your wife with you and it's 40 or 20 or however many they kill you then they're gonna take her but if you avoid it all together you can wait until another time when you're better equipped but anyway that's just a thought now i want to read you another another example because the apostle paul was going through stuff all the time people were constantly trying to kill him even from from the beginning of his ministry people were try, constantly trying to kill him and the other prophets and they use wisdom to escape many times this is uh you see it right here it says saul begins to preach the anointed acts 9 and 20 it says and straightway he preached hamashiach in the synagogues that he is the son of the most high but all that heard him were amazed and said is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound into the chief priest what were they saying right here well let's look at it in a in the nlt all who heard him were amazed isn't this the same man who caused such devastation among your followers in jerusalem they asked 
And didn't he come here to arrest them and take them in chains to the leading priests? So they was worried that he was, you know, that he wasn't really, uh, his intentions were not pure. Now we go here to verse 22. It says, but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Hamashiach. And after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. People wanted to kill him. But their laying in wait was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. You see that? So he had to get into a basket and get let down by the wall. He didn't go and face the people. I'm Paul. Y'all can't kill. I spoke to Yahweh Shah. Y'all can't kill me. He didn't do that. He used wisdom to get let down in a basket. See? And when Saul was coming to Jerusalem, he had saved to join himself to the disciples but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Yahweh Shai. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem, you know, and you may have a Jake that say, well, shit, that was what they did. And he say, it didn't say Paul wanted to get into the basket. Well, well, let's let's read it. Let's read a precept. This is going to be now 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'll jump in here. Verse, uh, he goes through some of his trials that he went through. I'll start at verse 22. It says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Hamashiach? I speak as a fool. I am more. And labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths oft of the Jews five times received our forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a day and a night, a night and a day, excuse me, I have been in the deep, and journeyings often, in perils of waters, and perils of robbers, and perils of mine own countrymen, and perils by the heathen, and perils in the city. And perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false brethren. And these perils are dangers. So Paul went through a lot of dangers. In weariness and painfulness, and watchings often, and hunger and thirst, and fastings often, and cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. So he had a big, a heavy portion and a lot to fulfill. He had to go through all that stuff right and he still had to deal with all the churches and it says right here in perils of robbers and perils of my own countrymen and perils by the heathen and perils in the city so all kind of dangers and in perils among false brethren and paul had to be wise and you had to use wisdom and flee in a lot of cases he got bit by a snake on the hand all kind of shit he was going through goose jumping out every five minutes like indians <laughs> inside joke Verse 28 says, beside those things that were without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I needs glory, if I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The Most High and the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, which is blessed forever, evermore, knoweth that I lie not. Listen to this. The testimony in Damascus, the governor under Ar Aretas, the king kept the city of the Dama Damascenes with the garrison desirous to apprehend me. He said the king of uh, Damascus, the governor of Damascus, should I say, had soldiers and they were trying to they were trying to catch me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. So was Paul a coward? Because he didn't want to go out and face that army, face those troops. And finally, I got the example here where men took a damn, took a damn uh, uh, oath. They bound themselves under a curse to kill Paul. Let's just go to it and read it because this is the thing. I forgot what I was going to say. It was, a, it was a conspiracy to kill Paul. Did he go and try to fight him? Oh, I know what I was going to say. The funny thing is that. General Mahayim used the number 40 specifically. And in the scriptures, there is, we're going to read it now, the conspiracy to kill, kill Paul, excuse me, 
and there were 40 men who did it. So this is Acts 23 and 12. It says, and when it was day, and you know, let me look and see if I got enough time here. Because this uh, program, yeah, I got to be quick. It gives you a 30-minute limit. And you can all, you know, you can come back and record more, but it stops after 30 minutes. It says, Acts 23 and 12, and when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. So excuse me, I said it was 40, but it was more than 40. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now, therefore, ye would the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though you would inquire something more perfectly concerning him, and we or ever he come near are ready to kill him. So they told, you know, the, the chief captain, I want you to get Paul down here in the council like you want to ask him something, and when y'all bring him, we're going to kill him. And when Paul's, when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait he went and ordered went and entered into the castle and told paul so paul's nephew overheard what was going on and he went and told him then paul called one of the centurions unto him and said bring this young man into the chief captain for he hath a certain thing to tell him so he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee who has something to say unto thee then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, what is that thou hast to tell me? And he said, the Jews have, have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldst bring down Paul tomorrow into the council as though thou would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not yield unto them for their lie in wait for him more than 40 men. Which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready, looking for a promise from thee? So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him, See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. So what wound up happening is they wound up moving Paul because of that. So he had to flee again. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready 200 soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen three score and ten, and spearmen 200 at the third hour of the night. And provide them beasts that they may set Paul on and bring him safe into Felix the governor. You see that? So you got to use wisdom sometimes. I mean, you really need to use wisdom in every situation. Don't be listening to this, these, these weirdos and this bad leadership and this bad advice. Because at the end of the day, them dudes are Judas ghosts. They got their pockets stuffed already. And when, when shit hit the fan, they're going to disappear. It ain't going to be nowhere around when you're going through Jacob's trouble. So I just want to do that quick lesson. All right. You're not a coward for using wisdom. It's a time and a place for everything. I'll see you again soon. Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.